thank you, organizer, for being here, at least in Miramar. Well, I am anyway here. But <laughs> so I'm the thank you, thanks to you all that you are still here, despite uh, the hot weather and um, surfing glasses and all the cider drinking. You are still here. That's great. So uh, you had a lot of lectures, uh, I think, so I will be very short in talking, and then we just uh, go a bit of coding. Oscar? What? Yes, he is here. Yeah. I will, when we start, go. So, uh, so the, the tutorial is on the code, which is called Vanier Berry, who doesn't know the name comes from uh, the name of a Greg, uh, Swiss scientist, Gregory Vanier, and uh, not from the name of Michael Berry, because uh, in, uh, in this spelling with I on the end, it means new in the Basque language, and uh, maybe you saw this uh, somewhere in the town, maybe you had some pinches in one of these bars, or not. Uh, so, why... Uh, why at all do we need a Vanier interpolation? So you, you, of course, you heard about Vanier functions during this school. They have many different applications in topology. But uh, here we specifically are interested in one application, which is the Vanier interpolation. Uh, <clears throat> what it gives us? Consider we evaluate an anomalous whole effect. Like, and it's an integral. Oh, do, do I have a, actually. A pointer? <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, consider we can compute uh, anomalous whole effect as an integral of Berry curvature. If you look at the map of this Berry curvature, you see something like this. You see very sharp hot spots somewhere near degeneracies. Oh, muchas gracias. Yeah. So wild points and whatever things can happen in the band structure. And to, to, the only way to evaluate is, is to have a very dense grid of k-points. Um, you can take, of course, to these k-points directly from our initial codes, but you will wait forever until you converge your result. So we need to interpolate somehow. Linear interpolation will not work, yeah, because if you are to interpolate between here and here, you just get a zero, a zero and you miss all important points. So what else helps us is the Vanier interpolation which actually even you start from a very coarse grid, like say you have point here and here, and still you can catch a very tiny detail like this avoided crossing somewhere in between the points of the original cell. And the second thing what it gives us uh, is actually a way of uh, taking these derivatives. Because, um, uh, of course, uh, if you calculate a derivative of a wave function on a grid, if you just apply finite difference, you can get whatever. Be just because uh, 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 wave function has a gauge dependence, you can multiply any function by any arbitrary phase at one k point, any arbitrary phase at another point, and you get whatever. Of course, Berry curvature is a gauge independent quantity in, in principle, but assuming that the gauge is still smooth. But in numerics, you will you get different things, uh, whatever you do. So you need to somehow fix a smooth gauge, and the Vanier functions also help in this. Um, so, you, of course, you, you were told, at, this, at least at this school, what are Vanier functions. So you start from block waves, which are extended, and you have localized functions on each wave. Yeah, and which, uh, which is done in the multiband case that at every k point you find such a unitary matrix U which transform your original block functions into this uh, function, wave functions with tilde which we call block functions in the Vanier gauge. These wave functions are not anymore eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, but they are some auxiliary functions and from each one year, uh, wave function, block function in, in one year gauge, you can construct uh, a localized one year function. So basically, finding this use is the problem of uh, one yearization. So find su such use that your one year functions are localized. It's also good if they are symmetric, they, if they respect the symmetry of the crystal, it is also very important. 
So, um, and this is uh, what is done in the Vanier 90 code, which was developed quite long ago, uh, and is uh, basically one of the most popular way of constructing Vanier functions. Also, there are other uh, less popular schemes which are implemented uh, in atomic simulation environment or in FPLO. But, uh, so, but the most popular is uh, to minimize the spread functional so that the total spread of, uh, one, of all one functions is minimal. So it makes them localized. More details can be found in a review in, of modern physics, which is 11 years ago, so it's not so modern. But <laughs> there will be more reviews, maybe. So es essentially, how the procedure of one operation works. Yeah, uh, so you start from uh, ab initio calculation, which gives you uh, block wave functions and energies on some quite coarse grid. From this grid, we construct uh, <coughs> vanier functions, which actually live in a supercell of the size of the uh, original grid. Yeah, this uh, this uh, is a procedure which you do with vanier 90 or, or some similar, and you find all these use. And from this, you can cal calculate the uh, matrix elements between different linear functions of the Hamiltonian, of spin operator, of position operator. They are well defined, they can be computed. And uh, having this, you can do another Fourier transform to a much uh, denser grid or to any arbitrary k point. And uh, in practice, it works very well if your linear functions are good. Of course, constructing a good set of vanier functions is a separate problem, and we don't talk about it today because it will take more than two hours just for this. So there are separate schools about vanier functions. Uh, the last uh, one was the last year in Trieste, and maybe next year will be another one, but not sure. <laughs> okay. Um, so just for example, we show uh, how we interpolate the uh, Berry connection. So, wave, uh, block wave function times a derivative of wave function matrix element, right? Uh, so, how we differentiate a block function? Let's write it. Uh, um, so, we, we we expand it in the basis of uh, block uh, of the block functions in Vanier gauge times this uh, a unitary matrix, which comes from the diagonalization of our Vanier Hamiltonian. So we differentiate this, we differentiate this. And from this, we get two terms. From the, the, first, we uh, differentiate the, the U matrix, which is the column vectors of eigenstates of our Vanier Hamiltonian. This can be done, well, by perturbation theory. Uh, and you expand, and you get this. And which, this we will call internal term. And uh, the other term comes from differentiation, from taking derivative of the block wave function that can be done analytically, and you get something like this. Uh, so basically, it's a Fourier transform of uh, this position matrix element. Uh, why we call it external term? Because uh, in some approximation, it actually vanishes. So tau uh, is uh, the one center. Consider your, your one year functions are, is that they are delta localized. Yeah, if they are delta localized, so the R, uh, the position matrix, it will be non zero only for big R equals zero and only for N equals M, and uh, it will be canceled by this. And finally, the whole thing cancels. So, why, why is this important for the tutorial? Because um, Today, we are not working actually with vanier functions. We're working with simpler models. So instead of uh, doing all this, we, some, we just take these matrix elements somehow and we give it to the code. And from, from that part, we use the same routines uh, which we would use for the vanier functions. So the idea of the tutorial is that uh, we try simple models. We sh look how it, the code works. And then if you want to apply it to the Vanier functions, you do it in the same way. Of course, if you know how to construct Vanier functions. So about the vanier Berry code. So basically, basically all these uh, things were implemented in post-W90, which is a part of the Vanier 90 project. And they worked. 
It, and of course, it already was much faster than doing ab initial calculations. But then, uh, of course, we meet some limits. And uh, sometimes our speed is not uh, satisfactory. And uh, so in 2019, I came up with some ideas how to optimize uh, this post W90. But finally, I didn't optimize that. Instead, I just wrote a new code. It's, uh, it's sometimes easier <laughs> than to repair the old ones. Also, of course, I was based on the implementation there, but much better. So it was written in Fortran. I like coding in Python, so I did that. And uh, to those who say that Python is slow, so that's the time in, okay, depending what ab initial grid we start, and we interpolate to 200 by 200 by 200 K points, uh, only one Fermi level for anomalous hole of iron. That's what we calculate. So uh, it has 18 vanier functions, so quite a small, actually, Hamiltonian, 18 by 18. But okay, that's the time of the logarithmic scale of post W90, and that, uh, after all optimization, uh, what we get with the vanier berry. So 14 hours, 36 seconds on one core. So basically, now you can run it just on, on a laptop, even for initial systems. But of course, tutorial is short. We cannot wait so long. So let's use KP models, and that, that will be a few seconds. Um, so there was some optimization also in terms of scanning of for Fermi levels and other things. Finally, it's much faster. OK, so, so main idea how I came to this uh, it was uh, the, something which I called the mixed Fourier transform which is a mixture of uh, slow and fast uh, Fourier transforms. So uh, we know that fast Fourier transform is fast. That's why it's called fast. Uh, uh, but it is not directly applicable to the Vanier interpolation. Why? Because uh, we start from quite a coarse grid, and then we want to interpolate to a very dense grid. So how it is sometimes done is you put it in a box, uh, pad it with, uh, make a big matrix of zeros. In the small corners, you put your actual values, and then you apply fast Fourier transform. But if your matrix is huge, you don't have that memory, and you need to store all, all at once, it's diffi more difficult to do in parallel and all, all the problems. So my idea was, which for, for me was uh, an original idea, but then someone pointed me that it uh, was already called a pruned Fourier transform, and I found it, it was found a reference to 1971. So, of course, <laughs> and it was not a surprise for me. <laughs> but but I, did, I, could, I, could, I couldn't find the, the, this uh, re uh, reference, how it is called in audio and electroacoustics. That's why I don't cite it in my paper, unfortunately. <laughs> in, in the next one, I will. Uh, so, so the idea is uh, we split our dense grid. Okay, this one is uh, eight by say we have grid the eight by eight by eight. Oh no, okay, into D eight by eight, and we have a uh, we have uh, four uh, FFT grids. Each of them is four by four. So on each grid we do a fast Fourier transform, and we treat all these k points together. We process them in in, in one in one shot. Yeah, and then we go to, the, to another grid, like of different, different color. And roughly that it works, uh, just uh, it, it's important to notice it because uh, in, in, when you run one year you need to define two grids, a full grid and FFT grid. Of course, it can be done automatically, but it's not always the optimal value. Uh, so we will def define it manually. And uh, so another procedure that we have is adaptive refinement. So we start from grids, and we, okay, we exclude symmetry equivalent points. Then we search for points which give uh, most contributions. Then we split them. Then we again exclude symmetry equivalent, uh, and so on. And uh, with this, uh, you can start from not so dense grid say from 50 by 50 by 50, but still after some iteration, you can arrive to a smooth curve. Uh, that's another. And uh, okay, so there are other things uh, which made the calculation more efficient, which in principle are standard things which one should do in any code, but they were not done uh, back then. 
when both W90 was first developed uh, for, I don't know why. I, well, first, first answer, they were lazy. My, but my uh, understanding is that by that time, one year interpolation was such a big advance in terms of speed that it looked like you don't need to do anything better. Uh, okay, so some further information. Of, of course, there is a web page where you can find all the documentation, all the information. So it's hosted on GitHub. So I am very happy to see your contributions as a pull request. Uh, we also have a mailing list, which recently is almost silent because it's better to communicate through GitHub, actually. So yeah, last year we did a summer school on one-year functions, not on one-year berry, but not only one-year 90, but there is a bunch of codes using one-year functions, and it was unified under one school. So the lectures still can be found on the ICTP webpage. You can Google and find it. And also there will be, there is a review preparing with the first also Antimo Marazzo, and me also somewhere, which, which will come out in a few weeks. So these are the faces of uh, contributors or somehow people who are somehow nearby. I mean, the, the scientific advisors of the contributors. And uh, some of, actually, Oscar is in the audience. He will help us with the tutorial. So if you have uh, some problem, you raise a hand. And also, who else is here? As, well, Alvaro is here, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so if you uh, have some problem, raise hands, and uh, uh, helpers will try to help. Oh, oh, they also see the tutorial for the first time, but okay. So uh, who had problems with installing on his computer? Well, okay, there was some. Uh, actually, so I wrote on Slack that if you did not manage to install, you can go to Google Colab. I think you just uh, Colab dot, dot Google. Okay, you say open Colab, and you okay select upload. Bro, okay. It will, it, Tutorial, and we select, okay, we start with the tutorial on KP models. Or maybe, okay, are there any questions? Maybe some discussion first. Uh, general, not exactly about the, uh, the things in tutorial. No? No, okay. So, okay, if you want to, to do it on Colab, you need to, to install, so Vanier Berry is not such a standard thing that it, it is not already installed, so you, okay, insert a code cell somewhere. And here you need to install, so with uh, this way, you call a, a bash command instead of a Python pro. So it should work, and we also will need the PST. Okay, for this tutorial not, but in general, next one we will need PSTB. So let's install. So we run it. Run, so let's see. I just did it a few, t a few minutes ago. It works, so, but just to demonstrate that it works. At least here, here it does work. It has Python 3.10, which is good, because with 3.11 we actually had some problems. Yeah, so this tutorial is not about ab initio calculations. So we stick to simple models where we actually know what we will get. Uh, by the way, is it better this way or if I turn it to normal way? Because I... Is, is it better this way? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, no, still running. Okay, it's, it's installing. Uh, what? Uh, you must, okay, it, okay, it's, it's fine, we can, I think we can, okay, let's, 
Let's start. And yeah, and then you need to restart of the runtime. Like you start the. Let's see if it works this way. Okay, it it imported it means that installation is okay. So whoever has problems on his computer, just move to Google Colab. Yeah, it's important that we have the Vanierberry version 0 0.14, which was issued just before the school, where I gathered all contributions uh, that were hanging around in the branches. Yeah, because with the previous re release, it will not work. So if you had it installed some time ago, it's reinstalled. So let's start uh, with a KP model. So what is the simplest KP model we can think of? I think it's a one by one matrix. Yeah, so just a free electron. Uh, how we define it? So we need to define a function. Uh, maybe just uh, how many people have never coded in Python? Oh, everyone has. Okay, great. So you define a function which accepts uh, a parameter, a 3D vector, and it gives uh, the Hamiltonian matrix. In the sp simplest thing, it is one by one matrix, which is k squared over two double electron effective mass, which is in a weird unit because k is an angstrom, inverse angstrom, uh, energy is in electron volts. So whatever the units, we don't care. We work qualitatively. Yeah, so, and this K-max is because, uh, okay, Vanierberry is the, was designed for, for periodic systems, not for KP model. So we kind of put this KP Hamiltonian inside of a brilliant zone, which is a cube, which is with, with the size double K max. So that's what we have to do. And then basically after we define this system, we can work with this like we work with any other system. If we start from Vanier functions, it will be our other object called system and it will work in the same way. Any questions? Yeah, so no, if not, and we define a path which also, also should be some object with some interface, which, which can be, okay, found in the documentation of what exactly what needs, basically these are the nodes given in the reciprocal lattice uh, coordinates, some labels, and length is basically the space, uh, spacing between neighboring K points, like the bigger the length, the more dense, yes, and uh, uh, in, as you see, Vanierberry is not a, is not a code like a Fortran code which has an executable that you compile and you give it input files. Yeah, it's rather a library or a Python model. So you need to write some code which actually executes. On the other hand, it may, it may sound, look like more complicated, but it also gives a, a lot of flexibility that you can run um, any workflows and it's more clear w which parameter goes where. At least I think so. <laughs> Maybe, uh, so to calculate, uh, we uh, have only one function which calculates everything. And as a parameter, it receives the calculators. Basically, a calculator is an object which can be used as a function. So it can be called, given some parameters, uh, uh, given all data on some FFT grid, and you run it. Okay, so we, this way we just create a tabulator, which basically just call in one without any parameters, but in some of them you can add, put some parameters, and you evaluate. So finally, on the, here we run the, the code after giving the grid, which in the, this case is a path. Yeah, a path and the grid is, is just a set of K points. So it's an object of the same parent type of the same class. Yeah, our calculator and, uh, yeah, by the way, we run it in, we can run it in parallel. Oh, we forgot. Yeah, we, when uh, go, uh, working with Jupyter Notebooks, yeah, it's important to execute all cells. I think I forgot this one. So we can use it in parallel, in serial. Maybe we, 
I'm, um, okay, will it work this way here? I'm curious how many nodes he will give us, give me. Uh, okay, somehow it executed. Okay, let it be in parallel. You, you can also do it in serial if you, so, okay, now execute. It should be quite fast. Okay, here it. Okay, it, okay, it's done. So when we have this result, so again, the result is stored as a, some structure of, it means it's an object which has properties, some properties are a dictionary. Result.results result is a dictionary of all calculators, which each of them gave some result. And the tabulated result can be plotted. So we have some built-in function, which is basically some wrapper of matplotlib, which just for convenience, uh, you can see, so what, what we got, yeah, just everything that we expected, right? No surprises. Uh, it's, you, you see these things, why? Because we, uh, we put a continuum KP model into a box, basically, into a brilliant zone, so on the edges we have these kings, so it, which means that we, whatever we calculate should not involve anything here. So otherwise, we will be wrong. But whenever we calculate low energy, we are okay. Yeah, and this is the parabola, which is just k squared over two. Yeah, so that we, we, don't expect, we don't get anything unexpected. Now, we, let's compute some quantities. So density of states. Uh, ohmic conductivity, you can see. Well, it, it can be written actually in two. Uh, okay. Just see a warning. So what are these? So they all implemented calculators are described here. So, okay, you can also search on the page. Calculator, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, there are two of them, ohmic Fermi surf and ohmic Fermi C. Okay, here V is a derivative of energy, so derivative of V is a second derivative of energy. Right, so, either you write it as a, that's, that's just the Drew deter. Again, nothing, Nothing fancy. So far, let's do something that, that we expect. So either it's uh, D, D alpha, okay, epsilon. D. Or it is, I think here should be mine. Okay, no, I think too much. Okay, the alpha actually it, it is the same as d k alpha d over d k. Yeah, just 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 a shorthand. So and uh, this would just with the f. Why we call it Fermi C? Because f it means that we can, everything which is below Fermi level contributes. Uh, is it clear why these uh, two uh, equality two expressions are equal? Why? How do you get from one to another? Anyone did a calculus <laughs> in the university? It's called integration. Great, great. <laughs> I just wait some interactivity. Yeah. <laughs> I want. <laughs> Yeah, so you can calculate it both ways. You, you, again, we, we run with all these calculators. And actually, when we have our energy, we, we know it. So, 
So uh, epsilon is just k squared over m. Yeah, right? So we, can, we actually can calculate everything and we know what it is, <laughs> right? So the first derivative is just k over, okay, over m, yeah. And we, okay, and the, uh, it's just one over m, right? So it's easy to, yeah, we calculated it in a few seconds here, right? So, 27 seconds. Okay, go collab is released. Yeah, so we can plot the density of states. Yeah, you can evaluate it analytically for this model. It's proportional to the root of the Fermi level. So we scan all Fermi levels, say from minus one to two, uh, that's what we expect, right? So here we expect zero, we get it, then we get its root, and here, why we get something wrong? Why? Because yes, because we have cut our k vector, so from here we, we, we went out of energies. We don't have this high energy, so, okay, so, and uh, then we, for, the, for this Drude term, which is called the ohmic conductivity, again. So we get, again, below zero. We don't have any states, we get a zero. Up to the, we have this, which is proportional to energy to the power of three half, and, uh, and the two methods give the same, and the same correct result. And from here, they give different, and both of them in, are incorrect anyway. Uh, why? Uh, if you see, we first use this tetrahedron method just uh, for you to know what, what would happen if we didn't. Uh, it was. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, if we. Wait a little bit. Yeah, so now if we plot it, yeah, that's the density of states that we get. Not very nice, right? Of course, we could apply smearing, but if it's too big, we, we lose the physical results. If it's too small, yeah, then we, we need more k points to converge. And uh, for the ohmic conductivity, if we plot it, what with, huh? Yeah. So we, to use the tetrahedral method or not, so, uh, we were here, so we define a calculator. For example, calculator ohmic Fermi C, and it gets parameters. In principle, if you want, you can calculate both ways. Say, ohmic Fermi C, you can, okay, and another will be tetra. And this one will be with, you see, the same quantity, but with a bit different parameter. We can calculate it in one shot, so it will save us time rather than doing two runs. The tetra means, uh, tetrahedron method, yeah. Explain what is the tetrahedron method for integration? Okay, uh, it's a very useful thing. Uh, for example, you have some, okay, integral, uh, actually this one. So uh, there, you see, this is a derivative of f. Uh, f, if we plot it, yeah, Fermi Dirac distribution, which uh, at zero temperature is just a step. Okay, you can apply, of course, the smearing, then it will be some finer temperature smooth. But anyway, it will be some sharp peak, right? Or in, at zero temperature is just a delta function. 
And actually, uh, so uh, how do we calculate this? Either we really apply some smearing and each K point contributes this peak. And you see these peaks on the other figure. Many, many peaks and you wait until they merge into one. Yeah? Uh, other way, you use some uh, interpolation, which is not uh, any more one interpolation, but linear interpolation. Uh, let's say you have a band which has energy here and here. Yeah. So w one way, so if you just take one K point, yeah, it gives a peak here. This point gives a peak here, and you wait until they merge, so you need denser points. Instead, you can say, okay, from here to here we have linear. And uh, we can say that here the energy is linear. And then if you have an integrate, okay, some, okay, delta of E minus E lin, okay, e, e fair. So you, you, you take this delta function of Fermi level and this linear approximation. Then you can evaluate it analytically, right? That's, a, that's a show in 1D, in, but in 3D, you actually divide all your space into tetrahedrons. That's where the name comes from. And then basically what you do is uh, you have your tetrahedron, And you need to find where it, your energy is cut, which can be done is a simple geometrical task. Say you, you have this triangle, and basically you need the surface of this triangle, which can be, all can be done analytically, assuming that you, you know energies at the corners of tetrahedron, and uh, from four energies in 3D, you can do a linear interpolation. So we say, okay, we have linear dispersion inside this tetrahedron, and we analytically evaluate this integral which contains the delta function. So that's why it uh, gives a much smoother curve. So if you see, okay, that's without tetrahedron. Here, with the Fermi C, no, no, sorry. Okay, both Fermi C and Fermi C uh, with tetrahedron method were, were perfect, right? They were just following this line, the dashed line, which is the analytic solution. Yeah, but uh, now with Fermi C integration, exactly because, yeah, math mathematically these two expressions are the same. But here we are contributed only by these peaks and we wait until they merge. Here we actually contributed by steps. And steps are not that sharp as peaks. So it just gives a, it just gives a better convergence. And that's why whenever you have something that is expressed as a, Fermi surface integral, and you can convert it to a Fermi C, then you should do it. It will converge faster. Okay, that was very clear thing, nothing topological, free electrons, just to see how the code works. Sorry, yeah. What is the variable? Uh, it's, it's the value of the quantity that we evaluate. In this case, it's the Drude conductivity in some units. Okay. What? what yeah. Well, is there, in principle, there should be what Zeeman per meter, but because we have a model in which we put a effective mass without carrying any units, then it actually has a tau, which is also kind of arbitrary. I think by default we just put one uh, femtosecond or picosecond something, I mean, was it, which, which is written in, in the documentation. But anyway, you need your reasonable guess what is the tau. Yeah, so and, uh, and multiply it accordingly. So, okay, next thing. Let's go do something topological. And the simplest thing which we can do in topological in KP is a while node. So we define, the, okay, the Pauli matrices. Let's set uh, the velocity. Let's put it two, no matter what. Well, it, actually it will be Electron volts, volts times uh, angstrom. Yeah, so how the energy will change with k vector. Again, we put some box, we, k max, which we put quite small here. And uh, this, in this line, okay, again, we create the system using this function, and uh, we give some symmetries to the. Actually, we can, if we don't do it uh, in integration, we will use all k points, and that's what we did with this uh, 
free electron. Yeah, this way we can reduce. Uh, in principle, a while node has a infinite, yeah, continuous symmetries, yeah, rotational. But uh, because we put it in the box, the box has its constraints. We cannot const rotate the box on arbitrary angles. That's why it's C4, C, X, Y, Z. And we give only uh, generators, so if there are other symmetries which are a product of other two, we, uh, they will be restored automatically. Uh, so let's, and we put time reversal, right? So from the talk of G Jane, it, will, it followed, right? That uh, time reversal doesn't change the chorality of a fermion. So if we have a while fermion at, the, at, uh, at gamma point, time reversal will not change it. So Sorry, the symmetries, uh, there's also inversion symmetry. Yes, yes, C for X, y, and Z. No. no. It, do, it doesn't have inversion symmetry. Yeah. yeah. No, it is not inversion symmetry. Inversion symmetry is different because it acts in different way on pseudo vectors. Like, uh, what, what is important, how it uh, acts on Berry curvature. Let's say you have uh, plus k and uh, minus k. Two points. Okay, two points related by inversion symmetry. Say you have Berry curvature like this. What will be Berry curvature here by, by inversion symmetry? You know? Huh? Yes, it should be the same. But if, uh, but, uh, if you have a rotation symmetry, uh, yeah, so it brings this point to this point, it will be opposite. So it acts differently. So yes, we have rotation symmetry, but not inversion. <laughs> also, time reversal will uh, flip it. Right? So, and, that's, and that's what we have. If we have a while node, it has very curvature pointing like outwards or inwards, <coughs> all like this. So it's compatible with time reversal, but not with inversion. So if we put inversion, it will be wrong, and uh, for all this very curvature stuff, we will get a zero. Well, if you have both inversion and time reversal, it cancels all very curvature. And uh, it is our responsibility to put here something correct. So it's better to put less than to put more. Because if we put something wrong, we get something wrong, and it is not really checked by, okay, it will check that uh, the unit cell is, uh, conforms with the symmetry that you give, give, otherwise it will be an error, but not uh, anymore. It doesn't, especially for a KP model, you know, it's harder to analyze it automatically. Unlike the structures which have uh, like models like SPG leap. <coughs> so let's put uh, some path in the direction 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Yeah, because here we give, uh, yeah, uh, coordinates of the nodes of the path in the crystal, core, in the reduced coordinates, not in the Cartesian, but uh, we want to work more with Cartesian, so that's why we divide this by the size of the box. Yeah, so we can plot it. Again, so yeah, and now we here we have yeah, what happened? What I feel? Uh, again, I, I did I, I missed? I forgot to run this cell. So yeah, now it's two vanier functions, which are not vanier, but we, they look like vanier like one for us. Uh, yeah, so yeah sec second we we define the uh, in tabulation we define a second calculator which is Barry courage so we gave him such a name yeah this is just a dictionary so here can we can give any name it's just labels as you see if we say you use it with a different uh, set of parameters you can give it another name and you get the results together yeah, and uh, as I was speaking about external terms, where was it? Yeah, here. Exactly, because in KP, our external terms are zero. 
it's just an example for Berry connection, but for Berry curvature, for orbital moment, and different other quantities. Again, that's, uh, we disable them just because they, any, they are zero anyway. Other, but uh, because we don't uh, put this matrix A, uh, these matrix elements, because they are anyway zero, this object doesn't have them. But if the code will ask for them, it will, it will be an error. So calculation will fail. So yeah, now we can plot. So let's see how the barrier curvature of the wild point. Yeah. So we what we plotted x, y, and z component. And uh, okay, the size of the ball is the magnitude, and the color is the sign. All right. So like what? Because we took in the y z direction, the, our so the k k x is equal to zero, so, uh, so the Berry curvature is zero. So Berry curvature is parallel to the k vector for a simple while node. Yeah, for more complicated while nodes, of course, it's not really true. So if you have multi band. Uh, Hamiltonian, then it can wind and have very funny shapes. But here everything is simple. Uh, what do we put here? Yeah. So, we, and you see that the Berry curve here is proportional to 1 over k squared. More exactly, it is 1 over 2 k squared for this Hamiltonian. Yeah, we can check. Uh, for uh, lower band, for upper band, sorry for a typo. Yeah, they are opposite, and for both they are odd, fu odd functions, but uh, in each, each direction is proportional to 1 over 2 squared. That's why when you take a sphere and integrate around it, you will get a, a what? 2 pi, right? So actually we can check, check it uh, by calculation of we don't really have a, uh, in Vanierberry. We don't have a calculator for a topological charge of a wild point. But for this, we can actually calculate it using a Berry dipole. Uh, okay. Again, for Berry dipole, we have two formulations: Fermi C and Fermi surface. Okay, so uh, so it is I, either d alpha omega beta f, or it is an integral of uh, okay omega beta d alpha energy minus d f over d e. Yeah, so they are equal, integration by parts. So my question, why here we cannot use one of them? Okay, this is the Fermi surface calculation. Okay, it finished, you see. So we, you see, in one run, we did it for several uh, grids. You see, we defined... Uh, Okay, FFT, FFT grid was equal to 5, which means 5 cubed. But uh, NK was changing from 20, 30, 40. Right? And we can check the convergence. Uh, you see that, that conversion, to reach convergence is not that easy for a while node. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Figure. <coughs> Why don't I see it? Ah, okay, I need to scroll here. Okay, so basically what we see here, uh, for a large enough K, we have some plateau. For smaller, we have plateau at zero, but you see with increasing K grid, it becomes more narrow. We can expect that if we take enough points, at some point we will converge to really a flat thing. So what we calculate 
this is a Fermi surface. So basically, this is a delta function. Uh, we'll, again, velocity is just the derivative of energy, which is also parallel to the k vector, but it is a constant, right? So basically, this we can evaluate analytically. It is just k over k, right? Very curvature. It is k over k cubes, right? Yeah, it, it's uh, magnitude, okay, over 2 k cube. So it's magnitude. So basically, if you calculate it, yeah, in, in spherical coordinates, for spherical coordinates it will give you this k squared dk, uh, which will basically cancel all k. And basically, you just have this pi from, for pi from the Fermi surface. Yes, so for any Fermi level, basically, it should be the same. And that's what we get. Huh? Can you please say again what is, uh, this is the Fermi surface? Yes, yeah, the Fermi surface for, uh, formulation of the Berry curvature dipole, so this one. Why Fermi surface? Because you see, this is, uh, at zero temperature, it's, it's just a delta function. Yeah, so the second formulation is this one, but we didn't do it here. Uh, we can run it, but uh, why will uh, it will be wrong anyway? You know why? Why it will be wrong? It was a question, yeah, it is a question. Why we cannot do it this way? No, technically you can run it. You can even uh, look what it will look like, yeah. but it will be wrong. Why? Huh? Yes, it's k dot p because uh, when we uh, take integration by parts, we exclude the boundary term, which we exclude because it should be periodic and it should be smooth everywhere in k-space, which uh, is the case for a real periodic system, but for kp, we have this very sharp on the, on the edges. So that's why we don't do it here. But in general, for real system, actually, again, Fermi C is better. So it was okay when the parabola goes up. So anyway, Fermi C is bound. So we don't get to the edge, but he, with value node. Okay, now let's do some more funny physics. Uh, okay, there were images, but they didn't they're not shown on the collab. But okay. There is a paper, maybe Adolfo knows this paper. <laughs> okay, which claims that for a while, uh, circular photo galvanic effect should be quantized for a while point. Uh, okay, so I, I was putting, okay, let's look at figures. Yeah, is this not? Okay, so. So well, basically, basically, the idea is that, uh, uh, okay, you evaluate some expression, which contains the, okay, no, let, let's look at expression, right? Uh, where it is. Where it is what you calculate. Okay, basically you calculate some tensor which has this form. Uh, which, okay, about physics, we, you, we, we, you have heard a lot. <laughs> so let's just look at the expression. <laughs> just be, be very technical. <laughs> okay, it has a delta function and it has a difference of Fermi levels, M, M. So it, uh, so it considers transitions between occupied and unoccupied and transitions should, and the frequency should be equal to the uh, dif energy difference. And, um, and then there is this, uh, this matrix element, which has basically has very connections and the difference of velocities of the bands. And it is claimed that uh, if you choose your Fermi level, 
some in a proper way, then there will be a range of frequencies where okay uh, where the quantity will be quantized, namely namely not the full tensor, but it is its trace. Okay, well, okay. No, wait, figures. I won't. Okay. And depending on, on what uh, Fermi level. So basically, this is. So dependent Fermi level is above or below, or. You have two while points, and if it's exactly in between, it will cancel out. Let's check it. Uh, this one now. So, we don't have a calculator for circular for the galvanic effect. So, let's create one. Uh, the nice thing about Vanier Berry is that you don't need to, to choose from a limited list of implemented quantities. You want another quantity, you, you define a calculator for it. Usually, either you look for a already implemented similar quantity and slightly modify it. And uh, there are some templates. One of them is called the dynamic calculator. Well, the naming is weird, uh, I know, but dynamic means that it has some, something dependent on frequency. That's all. What means the word dynamic, nothing more. So static are something like berry carriage and dipole, which do not depend on frequency. They depend only on Fermi level. Here we depend on Fermi level and frequency. So what we define an object which we call a formula, well, which basically defines the matrix element that we need to compute. Is it? Maybe the comment is okay. The comment was so. What I did, I copy pasted something, and I think the comment is even wrong. So don't look here. Okay, so we get the, again, with, the, with external terms or without them, we get the very connection, which, which we get from this data K object, and then, and then we process it in some way. So we take the velocities, take their difference, compose of this tensor or something, and finally we, okay, because we, anyway, we don't need the full tensor, we want only the trace, so we take the trace. And so, and finally, we get a zero-dimensional quantity, so just a scalar. And then the definition of calculator is quite e easy. So there is some factor depending on frequency, another factor depending on Fermi levels, which is just the di difference of uh, difference of occupations. Some smeared delta function. Yeah, here uh, for dynamic calculators, unfortunately, we still don't have a tetrahedron method, so, so we need to smear it and wait for convergence some factor, and we define how actually this quantity transforms on the symmetries. Yeah, that we need to define ourselves. Yeah, so it either transforms identically, which means it doesn't change, or it is odd, or maybe you need to take a conjugate, or transpo transpose, swap some axis, whatever. You d whatever you define by these functions. Yeah, and then you, you can use this calculator. So, okay, run the, the cell. Yeah, so with some parameters, again, so smearing weeds, Gauss, Gaussian smearing, Lorentzian, or whatever. Yeah, we run it in the same way. Yeah, in the, we get a result. Okay, here we put it as a dictionary depending on number of K points. Okay, it will take some time. I should have run maybe locally, maybe it would be even faster, but okay, no, not a big deal. Yeah, it also uh, writes uh, da data into output files, data files uh, uh, for people who like them, uh, stored, also convenient. But here for interactive things, we just g get all the results as a dictionary and we work with them. By the way, what's with the timing? Like, huh? Okay, but what is the plan? Like, when do we have a coffee break or? No, okay, why, why are you so silent? Yeah, I mean, maybe we could finish this 
Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, we can. Why is it so slow? Maybe I should run it on locally. My laptop will be faster. <laughs> okay, it's because I, I took quite many key points. So to see that it really converges. We can <laughs> go coffee break and. <laughs> yeah, and then it will. Do. Oh, no. It, oh. So the last one, right? Okay. So we can plot. Again, it's for one while point. It's not two while points, only one. So, okay, we see that, okay, increase in K points, for example, the last one is this one, which is not bad. Yeah, you, you see it, it is exactly minus one. And it is, uh, because we have some finite smearing, we, we, look, we have it like this, otherwise it would be actually a step function. So then you can play around what changes if you change velocity, but okay, what we expect. If we change the velocity, velocity what will change? Nothing. <laughs> oh, okay, it will, be, it will shift somehow, or not? No, it will not. Yeah, as long as we don't break, uh, I know, the size of the box, it will not shift. So, yeah. So, but what if we change the sign of the velocity? Sorry. Huh? This plot is uh, exactly what we want to reproduce from this paper. But uh, this is for a system, for, I, th I think for some tight binding model, right? Yeah. But uh, it's a periodic system. It cannot have only one value point. It has at least two. Yeah? Or four, I don't know, but but at anyway. So the thing is that at some energy, one while point starts to contribute. At other energy, the other while point starts to contribute, but it contributes with the opposite sign because actually, now here if we change, if we in the beginning of on the while point we change uh, v, it actually ch changes the correlative. So with a different reality, you get an opposite result for this. And we will see it after the coffee break. Okay, let's go.